Hello again, YouTube. This is Beanie Bomb, and welcome to my kind of general layout slash tutorial on PCSX2. So this video will show out the best settings, how to get it into 16x9 mode, how to adjust the resolution, the graphics, all that stuff, and of course, how to make the game run smoothly without the terrible slow motion effect. So first off, let's talk about the uh, general emulation settings. So if you want your game to run in 16x9 or standard 4x3, go to the GS window under the emulation settings. And you can go ahead and type whichever custom window size you want and it'll stretch to a 16x9 if you want it there. I recommend leaving it by 4x3 because if you put it in 16x9 it actually just stretches the image. But I have it in 16x9 for recording purposes. So disable window resize border, uh, basically it's just like on a internet or Google Chrome or whatever tab, how you can just resize the window. That's what that is. It makes it borderless, basically. Always hide mouse cursor, so whenever you put your mouse cursor in front of the, uh, I mean, the screen, basically, it'll go away. Hide window when paused. Um, basically, that's just like when you hit X, it'll keep the game on in the background. It's not when you actually pause the game, like in-game. Default to full screen mode on open, pretty self-explanatory. Double click toggles full screen, I think that's pretty cool. And then now VSync. I think this is a really cool thing because I typically never ever have VSync on because it just tanks performance on every game I've tried it on. But if you want the option to toggle it on when you're already on max performance and toggle it off if the VSync does impede performance, you can hit dynamic toggle VSync depending on frame rate. So if you're maxed out on frame rate, which is 60, um, it'll do VSync. And if you stay there, it'll leave it on. So it's really cool. If you want VSync, I recommend doing this instead of wait for VSync on refresh because that just means VSync is always on. All right, now let's go into speed hacks. A lot of the time, whenever you see videos on how to make your games run 1000 million percent works all the time fast, You'll just see them like check everything, just like every single setting possible on this is just maxed out, which is terrible and will break your game. For example, uh, some of these game fixes on Burnout Revenge, it was fine, but I tried loading up uh, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom and it just it was so bad. It was so glitchy and terrible. I recommend for the game fixes, leave all of these off. But if you have certain specific problems, um, then that's what these for. But they're very uh, situational. So as you can see, fix bad graphics overlay and FFX videos for Irementar Gerald. I don't know what that game is, but they're like game specific and stuff. These are very situational. I, I don't recommend doing them typically. But anyways, back to speed hacks. So enable them, but you don't want to max them out. What you want to do is you want to test them for your computer because it, it seems to work differently for everyone else. I have mine on uh, 2 for this, which is high compatibility with mild speed up. And I have mine on 1 for this, which is some speed up in most games, but lower compatibility. Whereas this is just, it doesn't really do much <laughs> when you put it on 0. These are on by default and I recommend keeping them on. Oh great. There's a, there's a lawnmower. Pardon that cut. Um, there was a lawnmower, and it was very loud because it was right outside of my window. Okay, so, anyways, enable flag hack, just leave that on, that's on by default. And then this one, recommended a 3 plus core, so if you have a CPU or processor that is 3 cores or more, so like a 4 core processor, or in my case a 12 core processor, then you want that on. So, again, on these, uh, sliders here, uh, you want to mess around with them and, and test to see. You most likely don't want them all maxed out because that'll just cause terrible, terrible slowdown. All right, now onto the GS. I don't know what that stands for, but basically this this section is just for <laughs> um, boost. I don't know why you would want this, but you can disable frame limiting. And by this percent, I think the minimum percent is 10, but it'll just like speed up your game. So at 100%, your game will run twice, twice as fast. So... Uh, maybe if you experience really bad frame rate, maybe that'll help. I, I'm not too sure. But, um, yeah, I, I don't recommend this if you can run your game, like, above 3 FPS. Because it's pretty ridiculous. It's kind of funny, but other than that, that's all for this. Alright, and now we'll go into our video configuration. So, you want to go to Config, Video, 
and then uh, plugin settings. Now for your adapter, if uh, you have a graphics card you want to select that, I have the GeForce GTX 780 Ti, but it just listed as the 780 here. Um, use the hardware. Use the direct 3D latest version hardware, not the software. Uh, and the interlacing, just leave that auto. Now for the resolution, um, I set mine to 16 by 9, again for recording purposes, but for the best quality, you want to not upscale, so you just want to leave it on native, but then it'll be all small. So uh, upscale to your choose, it's very much personal preference. Enable shade boost, also personal preference. I kind of like the uh, saturation, contrast, and brightness up a bit. Looks nice to me. Actually, let's take the brightness down. Just, just a tad. <laughs> so these are my settings. If you like the way the game looks when I show it to you, um, FXAA, FX shader. I believe I I'm not too sure about the FX shader, but I know FXAA can be taxing on the system. And then all the stuff down here. It's uh, it, uh, except for the HW hacks, but we'll get to that. These are all. Um, you only want to enable them if you know you can run the game with them. So if you have a computer that can't typically run games very well, then you probably want to leave these alone. I have my anti-stropic filtering at 16x, which makes the games look very nice, very crisp. Uh, typically uh, on games, usually 4x and 16x kind of look identical, but on, on this, for some reason, the 16x just looks so much better, and it doesn't seem to have any performance uh, impacts from what I could tell, so the 780 can run it. Uh, enable uh, edge anti-aliasing, if you can do it. Aliasing? I, I never know how to say that. Aliasing? Aliasing? Um, extra rendering sides, I'm not too sure what this is. I have a vague idea of what it does, but I just leave that at zero. And then on HW hacks, this is what I have. So MSAA, again, if you have a strong system, you want to put this at whatever you feel is right. If you've played computer games before, then you probably have a good idea of uh, what this is. Just experiment. If you get frame lag, then leave this uh, lower or whatever. Uh, I have these all, uh, these five checked because uh, it makes it look really good and it doesn't seem to have any side effects. Skip draw, no. And then these I don't have checks, but if you have for the NVIDIA hack, I have a NVIDIA and I don't seem to have any problems with it, but apparently this is a hack to work around problems with recent NVIDIA drivers causing odd stretching problems in DirectX 11 only when using upscaling. So if you have any weird like game videos or 2D screens are stretching outside the frame, then you might want to check that. I just leave these at zero and uh, yeah, that's about it for the video. Now to the audio plugin settings. So for this, again, it really depends on your computer. You can get kind of a good idea for it if you have it on max settings and you don't have it slowed down. So I have my uh, mixing interpolation at 4, which is PS2-like but slow. Um, although I might go ahead and reduce that to cubic just because I do experience sub-slowdown in some games. And just for reference, uh, my... Some PC specs I have is, of course, the GTX 780. I have a 12-core processor, and I have 10 gigs of RAM. So if you have a computer that is worse than me, uh, you might want to leave these at your max settings. Um, the de-alias filter, I don't like. It overemphasized the highs, which is personal preference. Typically, I'm a fan of high highs, but the highs are too high in this case. Uh, debug options, I just left that alone. If you know anything about that, then go for it. And then on the module, I just... Put two here again because it seems to uh, not really have an effect on the audio, but kind of has an effect on the performance, which is weird. You'd think that the audio quality wouldn't really do much, but hey. On the latency, I put that all the way down. Um, I'm not too sure why there is latency at all. Dang it, lawnmower man. <laughs> Pardon that. It's really early morning and the gardeners are over. Anyways, I set the latency to as low as possible. I don't know why like there's latency at all to begin with. And now this, this is where the slow motion comes from. The slow motion isn't actually as bad as it seems in terms of video, like actual slowdown. That's just because it's kind of like um, if you see bad video quality, but you hear really good audio quality, it's much better than if you see clean video quality, but see really bad audio or hear really bad audio quality. So basically it's on time stretch by default, which is awful. Why would, why? That's what that, you, you know the sound, the, the slow down, slow motion sound. So set it to none. Just just set it to none, put links down, you'll be fine. If there's any ever sections in your game where it slows down a lot, you'll just experience like skipping audio, but it really is, is much better than the, um, the original time stretch thing it has it on. 
Auto expansion mode, stereo, and then you should be good. I do believe that's all the settings that we need to go over. Oh, except for the uh, controllers, the pad settings, and in which case if you have a uh, controller like I do, you can go ahead and go to pad one, and then you can um, you click square, and then you hit the button on your controller, that would be square. On an Xbox controller, which is typically used with the PC, that would be X, triangle would be Y, etc., etc., or you can also set it to uh, keyboard buttons. I'm not too sure how you'd do that, but you could have fun trying to figure out what feels comfortable in that. And now if we go ahead and uh, go to our CDVD ISO selector, we hit browse. I have a folder on my desktop that has all my ISOs. You can get ISOs on the internet by just searching, um, like say if you wanted Burnout Revenge, you could search Burnout Revenge PS2 ISO. I use the Cool ROM one, but when you're installing uh, it with Cool ROM, you want to make sure to look at the options that you're checking because uh, they're sponsored by like Yahoo and stuff like that, and they have it so that if you hit Accept just on everything, you'll install a bunch of stuff that you don't want when you just want the ROM. So you make a folder on your desktop or wherever you want it. I have a folder of folders on my desktop that holds everything, but I keep this folder next to the actual uh, PC SX2 launcher. Go ahead and put your ISOs in that folder, and then you browse, search for the folder, and then we're going to go ahead and hit SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. I already have that loaded, but if we go to System, Reboot, uh, Full versus Fast, if you want to be nostalgic, like really nostalgic, you can, you can go ahead and hit Full because it has the... Uh, PS2, and you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that for you. Oh, yeah, pardon. One more point before we uh, boot the game. This is really important. Okay, so if you go to config and you accidentally happen to hit, well, first off, don't. Do not click on memory cards, but if you accidentally have to, hit cancel. Do not hit okay. It'll ruin your, uh, even though I hit cancel, it still launched the game. If you hit okay, It'll launch the game and it'll just destroy it. You will... I did it and I had to reset. I had to like factory reset, which you can actually do by um, going to clear all settings under the config. Um, but it, I don't know why, but if you hit OK, if you don't even touch anything, if you don't even hit apply, it'll open up a window. And for me, the game ran at zero FPS for the longest time, and then it ran at six FPS after a lot of tweaking. So just don't do it. Just, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, anyways, so if you boot full, you'll see the, uh, yeah, that. Um, but if you boot fast, then you'll skip the PlayStation 2 stuff and just get to the beginning of the game. All right, so far, so good. Pretty standard looking loading screen. The audio is the key. You hear the audio and all of this is really smooth and it's not jumpy. In these starting menus, it really, really can tell you whether or not your your game will run good. Because um, if just the starting screen is messing up, then you, you know the game is going to be bad too. So, as you can see, it's all nice and crisp. The bubbles are very sharp. The, the logo looks great. And Spongebob himself looks amazing! So we go ahead and press start button. Well, load game, I'm, I'm doing a series of this on my channel. Hey, hey, cr cross promotion! So we'll go ahead and uh, go into the game and you can see how it looks for yourself. Oh yeah, look at that. It runs very nicely, it runs so smoothly. Um, and it's not just because my computer is good. I know that it, this is very settings dependent because when I first, uh, when I first ran this game, it was awful. It didn't look good at all. It looked terrible. Uh, it was slow motion. It was, it was really bad. So just start off with the settings that I showed in this video. And then if it's not perfect, then you can go ahead and tweak it because you can get it perfect as evidence here. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. And, uh, oh, as a side note, if your frame rate is lower than 60 FPS, um, then, then that's just your computer and you might want to mess with the video settings that I talked about earlier. But if it's just the, uh, slowdown, like the slow motion terribleness, uh, go ahead and apply these settings and you should be good to go. So, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helped you. Let me know in the comments if you did. Also, don't, don't tart games that you don't own! <laughs> Alright, this isn't a lecture. Okay. Thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day.